thanks so much. It's, it's so good to be here. Um, I've been talking a lot about uh, this stuff for the past couple days and indeed the past year. Um, the presentation is called Design Can't Do It All. I'm a, a designer by training. I'm a creative director now, but I'll kind of always be a, a visual designer. Um, this is the stuff that speaks to me. This is the stuff that convinces me um, to do things and probably a lot of you as well. Uh, the subtitle is called uh, "It's Design Can't Do It All or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Focus on Creative Approach. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things today. One is uh, the notion of inspired ideas and, and how you get to inspired ideas and what's, what goes into them. The other thing I'm going to talk about is um, some principles and intentions that you can carry with you uh, as a journalist when you're writing, as a producer, when you're making things, as a designer when you're designing things. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. My name is Matt. Um, this is uh, a picture of myself in my backyard in Brooklyn in the summer of 1976. Um, in the background, you can see my great-grandfather uh, who emigrated from uh, uh, Lithuania in the 1890s. Um, he, there's a bronze sculpture back there. You can see a stage performance by my sister Julie. Um, you can see some news, you know, er, my, my, uh, my family religiously got the Sunday New York Times, uh, you know, and we used to go and, and read through it and ask them about the news. So the Concord began service that summer, um, you know, the Rocky came out in the theaters, um, a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, Apple Computer started. Uh, and, and there I am, the future creative director, kind of like, you know, wondering about the Carter Ford election that was going to happen in November. Um, Luckily, uh, uh, you know, Carter, Carter pulled through. Um, meanwhile, in Poland uh, in 1976, you know, the first kind of uh, mass protests were happening um, that presaged uh, solidarity. People in this room probably know a lot more about it than I do. Um, you guys were doing your own kind of movie posters and graphic design tradition that uh, most of the designers I know are absolutely in love with. Really beautiful posters. This is Nashville, but there's Rocky. There's, you know, we own a couple um, at our house. Um, and, and most of all, ABBA visited Warsaw uh, in 1976. So, you know, this is just to put uh, everything in context and kind of uh, giving away my age uh, in the process. Um, I work at Blue State Digital. We use inspired ideas to help brands, charities, and institutions talk to their most important people. And what we're saying to those, most, to those people, the biggest fans um, of your product uh, for Ford Motor Company, let's say, or your candidate, Barack Obama, or others that we've worked with uh, around the world, is that you can only do so much marketing yourself. You can only kind of spread the word and evangelize about what you're trying to convince and persuade people to do. Um, you know. It, you, you only have so much money, you only have one voice, um, the media can only reach so far. So the idea is that you want to convince people to do it for you. And this is how every campaign's been run since 2008. You're, you're giving people the tools to, um, to do the marketing and the one-to-one -one conversations, um, and it, it works as well for politics as it does for products. Um, it's it's a, a notion that we've known for a long time. So. The first thing about inspired ideas is that they can come from anywhere. It's not just creative directors, it's not just designers, it's not just journalists. Um, they can really, you know, some of the best stuff that came out of the 2008 and 2012 campaigns came from campaign interns who just found the right photo that, that was, was, uh, was put on Twitter at the exact right moment. Um, was kind of a different way of looking at things. So it's not just the domain of the people in this room and professional communicators, it's uh, students, it's having dinner with your family on Sunday and hearing something interesting. Um, a lot more goes into it. Um, and here, here are just some of the things that go into it, uh, using some examples of the stuff we do. Um, inspired ideas are innovative. Um, they're not always inventive. It's not always something brand new. Like, we were able to take taxis before Uber. Uh, Uber kind of added an extra layer of uh, user uh, pleasure <laughs> into uh, getting a car because um, you know it kind of erased a lot of the problems you had of waiting for a taxi and stuff like that. Um, so this is a you know digital garage for Google it's out of our London office, and you know this is a kind of on, uh, an online platform that helps you learn about uh, digital marketing. It's actually great for people in this room. Um, Google had plenty of white papers, and Google had all this information. All we had to do was kind of package it up, um, rewrite a bunch of stuff, simplify, um, and, uh, and now it's, it's this platform. 
uh, this is a big one for us. Um, this is the Love Must Win campaign for marriage equality. Um, this is for a client called Freedom to Marry. Um, it was a campaign that lasted about two years. Um, and we ended up winning the right uh, for homosexual couples in the United States to get married on a federal level in every state. Um, this is not something that we started. Um, you know, this has been a kind of slow behavior change that's been happening in the United States and worldwide over the last uh, quarter century. Um, but what we did is, um, you know, we helped people figure out how, what they could actually do, um, where they could show up, who they should get in touch with, how, sh how they should organize online, what they should do on social media, what kind of videos w we would use to explain the issues to them, and most of all, to explain to their parents and people in small towns and people who, whose lives you know, weren't necessarily affected by the issue. Uh, the third thing is that they should be enjoyable. Inspired ideas, even if they're about really harsh topics, like our work for, with UNICEF is about, uh, you know, children in poverty. And um, it's the most tempting thing uh, when you're working with a charity to, just to use that same photo of the starving child um, to, you know, for a fundraising appeal. And they still do some of that. Um, but what we're trying to do is create experiences online, uh, even if they're very short, like this one, which kind of tells you through a quiz what kind of aid worker you would be and where you would be stationed based on your answers, um, even if the subject matter is, um, is kind of rough. And lastly, um, even though the, the name digital is in the name of our company, um, a lot of what we do is not digital at all. Um, the inspired ideas are emotionally resonant. They, they make you think and they make you feel, and the creative ideas that we're executing always come from a place of how are we gonna change someone's mind about something? How are we gonna drive action about something? How is it gonna like really uh, make people feel a certain way? And also kind of having the knowledge about how they're feeling already, and I'm gonna get into that in a moment. Um, so I work with Barack Obama on both campaigns, uh, and also in the post-presidential, uh, uh, his post-presidential life with him and the, and the First Lady uh, at the, in their personal office, but also the Barack Obama Foundation, which aims to do a lot of the stuff that we're talking about in civic life and, and a new civic infrastructure um, is, you know, is something that a lot of people are talking about and a lot of people feel on both sides of the political spectrum. But it's not just about these ideas and it's not about executing them. Um, you know, it's not about the biggest data. Like I've had endless discussions about Cambridge Analytics and you know, the Trump versus Hillary and who did a better job and all of that. Um, and that stuff does count, um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of interesting discussions to be had around that. Um, if you have a beer or coffee with me later, we can, we can have that discussion. Um, it's not even about a great headline. Um, you know, as we heard from the previous speaker, like, there can be these, these kind of short gotcha headlines, not gotcha is the wrong word, but kind of um, that lure you into a story that isn't even really about the headline. Um, and sadly, and this pains me to say it because I am a designer at heart, uh, it's not just about design. And what I found fairly recently, like I would say in the last five or six years, um, is that it's about the approach. And if you Google design approach or creative approach, like there's a million out there. And um, I don't want this to be confused with a creative process or a design process, which, is, which I'll also talk about. But an approach is, is not like step one, step two, step three. Um, although that helps. Um, an approach is a set of guiding principles, uh, a framework uh, that you can take with you to make sure that, the, that you're gonna win, um, that you're gonna meet your goals, uh, that you'll remain uh, with your sanity intact uh, as you do these, the really hard work that the people in this room are gonna be doing. Uh, and I am a creative director, so I did need a, a, an acronym here, so I call it FEED. And um, the four things, the four principles I'm gonna talk about, and there's probably 10, these are four that I came up with uh, a couple weeks ago that have been on my mind. Um, focus, empathy, energy, and design. And I'm gonna kind of go through each one of those pretty quickly. The first one is focus. And I think that especially um, for activists and organizers and uh, political campaigns, it's really hard to keep focus. You're working in coalitions, lots of different groups trying to do things. This happens in the corporate world, but the corporate world and the brand world does a better job of kind of getting down to business and they're like, okay, we wanna increase sales by 4.8%. And 
And in politics and activism, you, everyone's got their pet issue and pet projects and internal politics that are far beyond anything that we see in the, um, in, in the corporate or even advocacy world. Um, so the first thing is to keep your eyes on your actual goal. And this is um, actually an excuse for me to show some Obama campaign photos from the night that we won in 2008. Um, this is my wife um, drinking uh, a glass of champagne that I kind of snuck into the campaign headquarters um, because I didn't want to jinx anything. And we pulled it out, you know, the minute he won. Um, this is, you know, this is a good sign. Less words, more meaning. This was a, a kind of campaign mantra that was all around the office. And it kind of goes to um, the two previous speakers, like what we're talking about. Um, people don't have time or, or energy to read your policy paper in an email when you're basically asking them for money or to sign up or to vote or to, get out or to kind of tell their friends about something. Um, they want to get right to it. And it's always been like that, but I think now th it's even more like that. Um, so, you know, this, the, the guy in the background is from the email team. You know, we were looking at this every day. Everything we did was for November 8th, every single thing. It wasn't kind of for our own design, beauty, or our own ego. Like, we put all of that aside. Um, this is the, the design director and myself um, sleeping under the desk where we cut the podium signs, um, you know, just kind of... Uh, you know, very focused all day and kind of running out of steam, which is, I'll talk about in a bit. Um, my job on the campaign was rapid response director, so we actually launched a site called Fight the Smears, um, which was one of the first kind of, uh, you know, setting the news straight, fact-checking sites for a political campaign that ever existed, uh, very similar to the briefing for Hillary Clinton, and, you know, they're, they're everywhere now, and they seem so quaint now um, because it just seems like such a, you know, a small part of what you need to do now to combat, uh, you know, uh, alternative facts and alternative fact-based news. Um, the second thing is empathy. And for those of you in marketing or, or creative, you know about, uh, you know, insights and interviewing stakeholders and all of that and kind of understanding your audience and going through psychographic reports and demographic reports and figuring out, uh, you know, brand sentiment and uh, net promoter scores and like all of that. This is, this is that, um, but it's more than just the data. I think the, the, the qualitative, um, really kind of um, uh, digging deep into who you're actually trying to convince and who you're trying to persuade and actually knowing the difference between those two words. Uh, persuasion is, is more of a process um, that aims to convince people. So conviction is the actual end goal of that. Um, so it's not enough, in, especially in an election, um, it's not enough, or even when you're selling cars, <laughs> it's not enough to simply persuade people, um, although you constantly have to do that. Uh, you have to get them to the voting booth. You have to, you know, put them behind the wheel of that car, or whatever it is, um, no matter what you're trying to do. Um, so my examples for that, um, one is a famous uh, 1964 ad called Confessions of a Republican, um, and this was kind of an anti-Goldwater ad. Um, and you know, there were a lot of conservative Republicans that were very worried about Goldwater and um, nuclear war and all of that stuff. So they got this guy, um, who I think was actually an actor, um, but conservative, uh, to come and give this, uh, made a TV commercial where he was um, basically saying, I don't know about this Goldwater guy. I think I'm going to vote for LBJ and all that. And it was quite successful. There was also the Daisy ad with the nuclear explosion and the mushroom crowd and all that. Um, the second one is this, this example from Saturday Night Live, uh, which is Tom Hanks. Um, and he, uh, you know, when he came out, this was before the election, when he came out in this getup with the, the red Make America Great Again hat um, and the, you know, Eagle t-shirt and all that, you kind of expected the writers would take the piss of uh, a Trump voter and be kind of really scathing towards, um, you know, a, a person who looks like this, and Tom Hanks comes out, and he's actually a very sympathetic character who's not a racist, who is just a normal guy. And it kind of like, the, the joke was that, you know, if you're uh, in New York, where Saturday Night Live is, is filmed, if you're in a big city, a big metropolitan area, part of the coastal or media or creative class, that um, your stereotype of this person is, is really terrible. But meanwhile, like, you know that's not really true. Like, it is true of, of, of some of them. Some of them are, like, 
racists, um, but most of them are, you know, have, have, have other issues or don't even follow politics in there, or follow politox, politics in the way that you might follow uh, football. Next one is energy, and I think that this is important in, in, a, in, a, in anything you do, but especially in politics and campaigns, kind of keeping up momentum, um, you know, knowing what to do. You know, there's, there's a bit about saying yes, like if someone needs your help, say yes. And there's also um, knowing when you've done enough and when you kind of need to rest and take care of yourself. Um, this is just some, uh, some pro bono that work that we're doing. This is a, a bail fund in, um, uh, in the Bronx that we're working with. Um, this is, uh, you know, people like spontaneously going to rallies when, when something terrible happens in a neighborhood. This is the, uh, a park a playground near my house where someone had painted swastikas. And the next morning, there was 2,000 people there. Um, and if you don't get enough sleep, this is a prime design example of what can happen. Um, you cut yourself, you fuck up, um, and no one wants that. Um, and the last little bit is about design. And this is about the, um, the process piece of this. It is about you know, the visual piece, um, but it's, it goes beyond that. And I would encourage you to expand your definition of design. If what you think is design is fashion design and visual design and graphic design and typography, it is that, um, but it's far more. So the one that gets all the press, and when a reporter calls me to talk about it, they wanna talk about this kind of design, because this is the kind of design that people uh, want to talk about. The top is the, you know, the, tr the Trump um, hotel website, which is actually using Gotham, which is the Obama font. It's very like clean and a lot of white space and like very well designed and the photography is great and it's, you know, it's like that. Meanwhile, the campaign site and all the campaign uh, merchandise was this other kind of design. Um, you know, if I'm sure the people who designed the hotel website showed uh, Donald Trump uh, a version of the website in the top, in the style at the top, and he was like, "No, no, no, not for this." You know, he's he does have uh, a marketing brain and a branding brain. Um, he wants the bottom. You know, that's the one that's going to speak to the people uh, that he's talking to, and it was wildly successful, though not necessarily great design. Um, but the parts of design that people don't talk about a lot, or not in the context of design as such. Um, are the kind of bigger questions of service design. Like how do you actually go vote? So on the, on the bottom is this, uh, it's a satirical thing from uh, The Onion, which is a satirical site that says, Florida's experimenting with a 600 lever voting booth. Um, and that's gonna solve all of our problems. It's a really funny uh, video. Um, so, you know, in the United States, all, every state and every municipality, even within states, has a different way of voting. Some are one kind of machine, another, another brand of machine. Sometimes, you know, there's paper, uh, sometimes there's hanging chads, and like there's different ways to do it. So there's a lack of consistency in the process itself. Moving up, uh, you know, to even more kind of uh, hard to figure out challenges, there's the notion of redistricting and gerrymandering where you could make a very conservative district vote um, uh, liberally, or you could make a very liberal progressive district vote conservatively just by the way you draw the districts. And this happens, this can happen quickly, um, but it's been happening consistently over the last, you know, 100 plus years in the United States. And it happens in other places too, where you could have the city vote one way, but then if you include the surrounding countryside, it could easily vote another way. So that's the framework. Um, I'm gonna get back to insp inspired ideas um, just to, to end up. And these, I asked um, our creative directors, you know, what are the things that you do when you want, when you need to come up with a new idea, an inspired idea? Because um, it's not always the same thing. There is that kind of creative block that happens. So these are some of their answers. First one, turn up Metallica and go for a run. It, wor it works for me, not with Metallica, but it works for me. This one is mine. Um, a blank canvas is my best muse. I, f I feed on, on the sense of endless possibility when a new document is created. I love a blank canvas. It's like a fresh start. You can do whatever you want. Other creative directors on my team hate that. Um, it's the same with writers. Um, I ideas tend to resurface in the shower or commuting when I'm not actively thinking about them. So this is the notion of your, 
you know, you're on your way to work and you're like, I got it, or you're about to fall asleep, or, or you're sleeping and you wake up and you're like, I, I got it, I got it. Um, that happens to a lot of us as well. Um, I close my laptop, lean back on my chair, and look at the ceiling. Um, you know, this is just like taking a break from what you're doing and, and taking a deep breath and, 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 and figuring it out. But the last one, and why I'm here, and why I came to Warsaw on Valentine's Day, um, and why I love talking to groups like this and trying to go as many different places as I can in my life, even before I was a, a professional designer, creative director, is a natural curiosity, but it's also that ideas get stronger when you talk to people who are not doing what you're doing, when you talk to people who don't look like you, when you talk to people who have different outlooks, even if you think you disagree with them, um, they make your ideas stronger and better. And um, I'm gonna leave you with this one. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you can get in touch with me uh, on the app or on Instagram I don't, or Twitter, but I'll, I don't really use Twitter anymore. Um, but thank you. <laughs>